Apple's new Mac Studio can be specced with the M1 Max chip, just like the MacBook Pro. Uh, my 14 inch here has got the M1 Max with 24 core GPU and 32 gigs of RAM, and it's pretty fantastic, but all of that power is crammed into this tiny chassis. Now just imagine what that same chip could do in that new Mac Studio with the huge new cooling solution. And it would be interesting to do some comparisons, uh, if only I could get hold of a Mac Studio to compare with. Uh, so this is actually the entry level Mac Studio and I'm deploying the air quotes because this thing still costs £2,000. So it's not an entry level Mac, but it is the entry level spec of the Mac Studio. And I think it's the spec that will sell the best since it's the standard off the shelf M1 Mac spec and you can go and just buy it at the Apple store. And it has the exact same M1 Max configuration as I have in the laptop, 24 core GPU and 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, the only difference is that the laptop comes as standard with the one terabyte SSD, whereas the Mac Studio has a paltry 512 gigabyte drive. And that does mean slower SSD performance, but that is a bit like saying one rocket is slower than another rocket. Uh, most people will never be able to see the difference in real world usage. Now, I did run a Blackmagic disk speed test on both machines, but I take these results with a pinch of salt because the performance is so variable from one test to the next. Uh, especially it would seem on the MacBook Pro. So let's focus instead on what Apple is doing with all of this extra thermal headroom in the Mac Studio. Uh, surely they've taken the opportunity to squeeze a little bit more out of that already impressive M1 Max chip. So I'm going to do a range of benchmark comparisons to see, and we'll start with the obligatory Geekbench 5. And you can see here from the graphics that they're basically scoring the same. A three points difference on single core, and the MacBook Pro is actually scoring 34 points higher on the multi-core test. Uh, though it should be said that every time you run this test, you will get a slightly different result. So what these numbers show us is that performance between these two machines, as far as Geekbench is concerned, uh, is identical. Let's withhold judgment on that for just a moment and run a few more tests. I've done the Geekbench 5 Metal GPU test. I have to say this isn't a great test because it never actually pushes the graphics cores hard enough to get a proper result. But we're comparing two identical chips, so let's go for it. And if we run the test multiple times, you'll get scores that are thousands of points different. Uh, though generally, the Mac Studio did seem to average a higher score than the MacBook Pro. So I decided to move to something that would push the chip harder for longer, a 10 minute Cinebench R23 multi-core run. Uh, this is a 3D render test using the CPU, and it definitely does get the fan ramping up on both of these machines. And the final result is a win for the Mac Studio, but not by much. It scores 12,394 compared to the MacBook Pro at 12,373. I'll confess that I expected more from that one, but uh, let's now try the BMW render in the latest version of Blender. Uh, first of all, using the CPU render process. And the MacBook Pro finished in 3 minutes 24 seconds, and the Mac Studio wins in 3 minutes 21 seconds. And if we try the same render with the GPU using the new Metal optimization in Blender 3.1, the MacBook Pro finishes in 55 seconds, and the Mac Studio takes 57 seconds. I did this one a few times, and I found that the MacBook Pro won every time by a couple of seconds. So, are you confused yet? Let's try one more test. Now so far, we've managed to ramp up the fans, but never to the point where they were really working hard. So what I did is I loaded up a recent video project in the latest version of DaVinci Resolve Studio. And there's nothing complex about this timeline other than the fact it's shot in 5.9K Blackmagic RAW. And we're going to render this out to 4K H.264. Now of course, the M1 Max has got dedicated encoders for H.264, but it doesn't have any optimization for Blackmagic RAW. So that means that in this workflow, the render process will require the GPU to decode the 5.9K B-RAW footage, scale it to 4K, and then transcode it to H.264 using the onboard encoders. And I actually edited and rendered this particular project on my MacBook Pro originally. So I know that about two minutes into the render, the fans will ramp up considerably. Now just to make sure that the faster SSD in the MacBook Pro isn't uh, messing up our test numbers, all the source files are coming from a Samsung T5 USB drive. And the MacBook finishes the render in 4 minutes 15 seconds. 
Now just as a side note for context, my massive video editing workstation with Threadripper Pro and dual Quadro GPUs is only about a minute quicker for this particular project. So this M1 Max laptop is a fantastic machine, especially as I was able to edit and render that project while sat up in bed running on battery power. Of course, I have tested it both plugged in and on battery power, and I found that there's no difference. It's another thing that makes these MacBook Pros so great. But what about the Mac Studio? Well, its fans also got pretty audible, and it finished the render in three minutes, 47 seconds. And I tested this a few times, and the results are consistent. The Mac Studio here is finally showing the advantage of its thermal solution, because it shaves half a minute off of this render time. So the Mac Studio can perform at a higher level, but this isn't because Apple has taken advantage of the cooling in it to turn things up a little bit. It's more a case that it can go for longer without thermal throttling. And honestly, that's slightly disappointing and seems like a wasted opportunity to me. But it does provide us with some useful insights. For the vast majority of workloads, the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio offers no performance benefit over the smallest MacBook Pro. And given that the 16-inch MacBook Pro is able to squeeze a bit more out of the chip with its high power mode, uh, I suspect that that model would actually be outperforming the Mac Studio, except in very heavy extended workloads, like the video render we just showed you. That doesn't mean, incidentally, that the Mac Studio will always be better for video rendering. It does depend what codecs you're using. If, for example, you're working with ProRes, then there are dedicated decoders on board for that. Uh, so the margin of difference will likely be much less. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic desktop machine. And at £2,000, I think it represents fair value, especially as if you spec up the six-core Intel Mac Mini, which Apple still sells with 32 gigs of RAM, it comes to the same price. And the Mac Studio would absolutely destroy that Intel Mac Mini. It leaves me wondering, though, why wouldn't you just buy the MacBook Pro? I mean, this M1 Max MacBook Pro is more expensive at £3,000, but if you configure a one terabyte drive in the Mac Studio, it goes up to 2200 And if you already have a display, a keyboard, and a mouse, then sure, you're saving £800. But if you've got to go and buy an Apple keyboard, and a mouse, and a nice 4K display, well, you're basically going to be at the same price. And the MacBook Pro is far more versatile, but of course, we all have our preferences and different requirements. I'm personally swapping out my 16GB M1 Mini for this Mac Studio, and that does represent a pretty huge upgrade. Uh, but now that I'm shooting videos at a higher resolution, um, we're finding that Tom's PC laptop just can't cope. So having another editing machine around, it's a useful thing to have. So this Mac Studio, it's a really nicely engineered piece of Apple hardware. Uh, and the M1 Max version represents fair value, I think. But just don't buy it expecting to see gains over the M1 Max notebooks. Unless you've got a workflow that's going to be pushing this machine to the absolute limit. And if that is the case, this probably isn't the right machine for you. Maybe you need to look at the M1 Ultra version. Uh, I will be doing some more testing with this machine, so if you enjoy Mac and other tech content, please consider supporting the channel. It's just one click of the subscribe button. Uh, maybe consider leaving us a thumbs up, or down as the case may be, and perhaps share the video with someone else you think might enjoy it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments, and I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.